Borda sit my dis wedi bod du i Roan a Cristo im cartref to it. Or in English, good morning, I'm Rowan, and how's your day been? And welcome to my spooky house. Uh, as to why I speak better Welsh than I do Irish Welga, uh, that is something I address at the beginning of a lot of recent videos. Uh, shortest possible version is... Combination of Catholic guilt and the fact that Welsh is a much easier language to learn and It's been a while since I've done a med vlog video, so I figured why the hell not granted I'm not doing them live lately because for some reason in spite of the fact that I have often had over a thousand uh, subscribers Sometimes just about barely. YouTube has decided that in spite of this, plus the fact that I have had zero restrictions on my account, that I somehow don't meet the requirements, even when I am over a thousand uh, subscribers, to, um, what's that word? Stream from my phone. So... When these are going to be live again, I don't know. I've tried a number of third-party streaming apps to do this from my phone, and there's a very tiny window of time when even the most usable amongst them is usable, because I run about tw six hours behind the rest of the world, because I'm usually in bed at 4 a.m. and awake at noon. Or, you know, in the area of. I woke up today around 11.30. Uh, did not have the uh, sensations as far as uh, pain management and all that goes to, um, what's that called? Uh, get out of bed until almost one. And then, of course, coffee is a thing that has to happen before I'm up and about. And... Before coffee can happen, cat food has to happen. And I do it that way because that way I don't have cats up my ass while I'm trying to get thing while I'm doing things with hot things on the stove, which makes things hot. And that's on the floor. I'll get that in a bit. Just so long as the cats aren't around me when it before I get to it. And my floor, my pills. I know how long it's been since I vacuumed in here and they're going into my gut. So, uh, speaking of pills and stuff. So, let's see. A uh, quick-ish update. It's been in a fairly eventful last couple of weeks. And, uh... Uh, so let's go with the uh, happier news, which is, okay, so um, for those of you who may not be aware, I'm sure it still happens, even though I'm very unprecious about this information, but at the same time, I don't really go out of my uh, way to tell everybody every time, though, though the recent rash of uh, uploaded edited and uploaded videos I've done uh, might suggest otherwise, but um, just because it's come up a lot. It, it's in the news a bit, so of course I have to add in my two cents, or I have to, you know, have thoughts about things as they happen to certain news events and otherwise nonsense across the internet starts the thoughts going in my head. But yeah, so in case you couldn't tell from this... Um, I am a transsexual man that is female to male, so, um, like, reverse Caitlyn Jenner, if that somehow is still confusing to you. Uh, and so, um, TMI report, 
or warning, whatever. I don't know. Like everybody likes to likes to whinge on about about trigger warnings, and I'm like, okay, first off, like uh, most of the people who I swear, most of the people who you know specifically want it worded as trigger warning probably don't have any kind of mental illness triggers. Like they probably have like you know minimal at most, you know, mental illness issues, right? And I say mental illness triggers uh, more broadly because, like, um, while the term did really come into prominent use via um, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and you can have PTSD flashbacks and, you know, uh, similar enough kind of reactions, um, triggered by certain events. Um, there's also, like, anxiety triggers, um, eating disorder triggers, stuff like that. So, like, basically, if something, like, triggers your mental illness, like, that is why the term trigger is useful, because, you know, it's, uh, I forget exactly the etymology, as was explained to me one time, but, like, think similarly to, like, you know, an especially sensitive, like, they say that, like, certain guns have a hair trigger on them, meaning, like, anything can set this gun off. Like, you can drop it, and it can go off. And so, I, that's why I think it did come up with, why it first came into prominence with the PTSD, um, community, because, um, I mean, obviously it applies to more than just soldiers, but PTSD as a mental health issue has had the longest association with soldiers, like, uh, um, 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 I forget if it was, I forget exactly which, which, uh, which ancient Greek, um, most sense it would make would either be Hipp Hippocrates, uh, who would be, like, the quote-unquote father of modern, modern medicine, um, or, uh, Xenophon, I believe, um, who was soldier and, um, the, um, Oh, crap. I forget the name of the original story, but he wrote a thing that the Warriors was kind of based on. I mean, to some extent, it kind of is um, his uh, story verbatim, or, you know, the one he uh, he wrote. It kind of is that verbatim, just, like, with the setting, you know, being New York City circa 1980, 81-ish, and the characters being you know, various street gangs. So, yeah, I mean, it practically is that story verbatim. I forget the name of it. I really do, but yeah, I believe, yeah. So yeah, it was either, uh, it was either Hipp Hippocrates or Xenophon who first, um, basically described PTSD as we know it today, and, you know, and describing it as, um, Murnau, please, you, you cannot have my meds. But right, right, content warning is, like, a bit more, um, broad, so, like, if something is just upsetting, that's not necessarily a mental illness trigger. It's like, like, people can be upset by things and not have it trigger their mental illness. And, you know, it can be, you know, kind of disturbing to them to sit with that story for the rest of the day. But it's not going to trigger, a men you know, certain mental illness symptoms. And plus, like, w w content warnings have been a part of mainstream cultures like like what the hell do you think movie ratings are like what do you think you know it is like viewer discretion advised at the beginning of like every episode of law and order svu like seriously like it's, it's one of the longest running scripted tv shows on on right now and like nearly every episode and it's now 21 seasons has began with a content warning so yeah if people want to complain about that then it's like Honey, do you even watch television? But yeah, content warning. Uh, info may be may become a bit TMI. Um, potentially NSFW. That's another thing. Is like NSFW. That's been something that that's an initialism that's been a part of internet culture since uh, I want to say at least 1998, 99 when I first started seeing it from people. Or at least I don't need this one right now. This isn't as needed. Or at least. Um, being especially conscious of it. Like, I'm, sh I'm sure I did see it more often on Usenet prior to that, but whatever. So, uh, so yeah, the trans stuff. Um, so, uh, so yeah, obviously, I've had this done, 
And if you couldn't tell from my voice, I've been on FTM HRT, so testosterone. I've been taking that in some form or another. Uh, used to be on injections, now I'm on um, androgel. Uh, so none of this is any of that, but this is all completely different stuff for different ailments. So let's see, this and the HRT, that both happened... Uh, how old am I now? I want to say 20 out 6, so about 14 years for the last year and some. I've just been rounding up to 15 just because, like, I don't know. It's just too much math sometimes. Uh, so, yeah. Um, 20 out 7, and I'm just pointing my voice because, well, and I guess the scruff because, I don't know. Um, and this, this was both about 14 years ago. This actually happened before this because they were as big as my head. But, again, that's another story for another time. And um, on the good side, like, if you've done your maths, um, I'm also on um, Social Security, Disability, and Medicare, and Medicaid. And this is the other 45 days worth, because those are enormous pills. Um, so, yeah, if, you, if you've been keeping track of the news, like, I got stuff done before it was officially covered by um, Medicare and Medicaid. So on the good side, like silver lining with the raised eyebrow, they were as big as my head. So that's how it happened with um, Medicare before it officially happened under Medicare. Uh, then where was I? And uh, let's see, it is now 2020 and... Um, one of the few good things that happened to me in 2016 was my name change paperwork finally happened. Um, there are reasons that it was not amongst the first things to happen. Um, in fact, like, I've had a lot of very confused um, looks and even really invasive questions from other trans people asking, Well, why didn't you get your name done first if it bothers you too much? I'm like, because... In Michigan, it costs upwards of about $300 if you're paying for it out of pocket. And, um, and it took me that long to learn uh, that it can indeed be covered, or at least by the time I did it, it was indeed being covered by uh, County Legal Services for gender confirmation. Uh, I don't know if this was something that was going on before it was, um, gender stuff was officially covered under Medicare and Medicaid, which is two different things. People think they're the same, but they're not. Uh, Medicare is federal and it's linked to Social Security, and Medicaid is, uh, the, uh, state supplementary, um, portion, and that is, uh, that's determined by your county um, DHHS office, Department of Health and Human Services. So yeah, uh, name, uh, 2016, um, very early 2017 because, um, I had to, uh, I, I wanted to wait until my name change was done first because that way I, you know, there, that there's only just so much paperwork to send out, like, you know, just get it all done, like, as efficiently as possible. Uh, so January of 2017, I got um, my passport, which was which now means I have federal documents saying that I am legally male. Uh, then after that, I got my uh, my state ID updated because I do not see well enough to drive. Um, also in 2017, I I got on uh, that following May, I got lower surgeries, because not all of them was um, GRS, genital reconstruction surgery. Uh, so I got, in my case, um, hysterectomy, vaginectomy, because it's two different procedures, and um, metoidoplasty with urethral lengthening and scrotoplasty. Like, this was all done in one um, in one single, like, marathon eight-and-a-half-hour surgery session, um, and I was originally scheduled for only six, and it took extra time because I am a small person. 
You'd think that would take less time, but, you know, small person, small proportions, and my healing time post-op also took an extra two and a half weeks, three weeks, something like that. The surgeon, he's, he's very good at his job. In fact, uh, he started doing metoidoplasties because University of Michigan's uh, CGSP, Comprehensive Gender Services Program at U of M Health um, System, which would be the, uh, the local hospital, my you know, I, I kind of stick with. Um, they wanted somebody who does metoidoplasties. And his specialty is um, urethral lengthening for hypospadias, uh, which is when, so like normally, you know, the, um, the urethra ends out here, right? Because, you know, diagram, handy diagram hand. So usually it ends here. Sometimes it ends here and, you know, they don't do much about that, if anything, like this isn't even considered necessarily operable right there. But, you know, it, later in life, if, you know, a guy so wishes, he may get it done, just, you know, feel a little less self-conscious. But, you know, if it ends, like, down around here, maybe, or even here, you know, they'll, like, do some little, like, clippy-clippy, lengthy-lengthy, you know, when he's very young, so, like, either very shortly after birth or, like, you know, before the age of, like, two or five at the most, like, you know, just a little bit of a little nip and, nip and suture to um, just bring it up to about here so that, um, you know, it, it causes less issues at urinals and all of that. But if it ends around here or here or less commonly way bound down here, um, then they just kind of like, because of the way scar tissue acts, and all of that, that is when they will just like, you know, we got to leave this until he's an adult because um, scar tissue could really complicate things um, if we did it now. So, yeah, my, um, so yeah, like hypospadias or hypospadiac urethra, both terms are used interchangeably within um, medicine. That's when your, uh, that's when your pee hole, you know, ends further down the shaft than, than it typically does. Whatever. Uh, so, yeah. He decided to start doing it because we're coming to urology to see if anybody wanted to learn. And like I said, this was his specialty. And he's just like, oh, it's basically the same surgery, only on a much smaller shaft. And, uh, yeah, there's that ligament in there that, you know, they, they want to clip it to, like, let the shaft, you know, um spring forward some more so he's just like okay so it's basically a hypospadias surgery a smaller shaft with this one primary difference and usually you know you're going to want a scrotoplasty involved which is whatever scrotoplasty is basically the most uh, or at least on f to m patients is probably the uh the most successful form of skin grafting they take an area from where um, from another part of the body, sometimes another person completely, and they place it where skin is needed. And, um, oh, okay, I did not do two of those in one, okay. Two of these look very similar, so, uh, so yeah, like, now think about, like, what that would involve. So, I just had the metoidoplasty, right? And so, uh, uh, back in 2017, because of the size back in 2017, Surgeon um, thought, like, maybe if I got the, uh, the, the testicle implants, um, it would get in the way just because of the way size goes down there. And plus, like, not all of the trans guys he's worked in necessarily wanted them, or at least at the time. Like, that would be done in a different procedure in a way just, you know, because um, otherwise that's a lot of... Um, swelling and healing time, like all in one area, and if um, and if the implants, you know, have a way of like obstructing the urethra, like that soon after um, having the surgery on it, that could really complicate things. So it's done in two procedures, and he was recommending, well, maybe not at this time, but if things, you know, like you know, get a little bigger or, you know, and all of that, like, feel free to, like, 
get back in contact with CGSP and we can go from there. And at the time, I was just kind of um, on the fence about it because I was figuring, like, that was not, you know, like, a must-get-done-now sort of thing. But basically, like, as the last three years have gone by, like, the more and more self-conscious I feel about it. And I would kind of like a little bit of a bulge, at least, like more than now, as I'm hung like a crazen, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, bonus points if you caught my reference. Uh, I want to say back in October, I got back in contact with CGSP at University of Michigan, and I forget the exact order everything was going on in, but, you know, holidays were also a thing as well, and so, um, early in January, I had a couple of appointments made. Now, the appointment with um, urology about the about the Nards that was that was actually scheduled for like for the beginning of this month. You know, just like the consultation, just to see if we could make if we could make balls happen, or if they would recommend me, you know, vacuum pumps some more. Which I admitted to the um, to the uh, to the doctor who checked me out at my appointment last week that yeah I did do that but I got bored with it after about six months and then like Isaac kind of moved in and I got really selfish self-conscious about doing that around him and I don't know it just I just kind of fell out of the habit and um, I'm also pretty sure that the um, cylinders are getting a bit like the biggest one is getting a bit small on me anyway, but whatever it's 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 a thing it happened, but yeah, like I've had some extra size happen and um and surgeon is you know like pretty confident we can get something in there, and hopefully it works out now, what I'm really impressed with is that the uh the surgery date for this is for the fifth of March, and yeah, I only saw this this doctor just. Um, little over a week, yeah, about a week and a half ago now. So, that's nice. I'm getting balls. And, um, and it's happening very soon. So, I also, um, went to, um, uh, Ideal Body Piercing, the old, uh, Pangea, um, body piercing studio out, um, on Liberty Street in Ann Arbor. The, uh, so yeah, I went to uh, talk to my friend Jess down there at Ideal um, about retainers, and she's pretty sure just because um, Nostril and Beauty Mark are both uh, 10 years old this October and December, um, that these should be fine just out of my face for a day or two. Um, this one might get you know, might be a little bit tight to get back in, but, um, you know, worst case scenario, I just, you know, I still have it in my little baggie, and I go back down there, like, as soon as I'm good after surgery, right? But, uh, so the, uh, the lower librette, the septum, and I've got, like, a year after I got, uh, I got my surgery, I went and got my, my, uh, my junkery pierced. So, um, and yes, I said re-pierced. Things get in the way when you start HRT. And, uh, so yeah, I, um, so yeah, we're gonna get a, uh, a little, uh, curved, um, bar retainer down there. And one of the little, um, um, I know we're gonna do a silicone post here and whatever one that they usually give for the septum here. So that's $45 out of my budget for next month. But it's not bad. Not bad. Especially considering that I had to pay 53 this month to um, pay the six-month rent on my P.O. box. So as always, if you have more dollars than cents, I've got a PayPal tip jar down below in the description box. And I've got... Um, thing, thing, Patreon. So, uh, so yeah, I was actually thinking that if I had extra time, um, from the, uh, the med blog update on everything that I would read off, like, 
I even did a poll just to see like which people would be more interested in and between um, Instagram and the cross post to Facebook it went about 50 50 so I was just like okay random facts or um, potentially unpopular opinions and I wrote down a list from you know for both um, thing I wrote down both lists a couple of them and I don't know but yeah I was thinking I might have had extra time but I don't know I I got all my pills put away like I should have like and this I I guess it just goes by really fast when you do you know no matter like how yeah you know, at some point even when you got like a big ass plastic shoe box full of pills yeah you know, it just it, when you do it often enough it just goes by really fast so um I guess I will do a video on each of those yeah I do need to refill my vitamin I well, get a new bottle of them anyway. Uh, so, yeah, as always, um, take care of yourselves, which includes wearing your sunscreen. Yes, even if you are dark-skinned. My lawyer, who, you know, was uh, very helpful with the um, name change work. Oh, and also, that's another happy thing that happened this week. I got an email back. Well, I mean, it was a, it was a mass email to a bunch of people um, who are included in an Ohio um, class action lawsuit uh, brought up against the state of Ohio by the Ohio ACLU because Ohio is still one of three states left in the U.S. wherein trans people are not allowed to legally um, amend or otherwise change our birth certificates to reflect uh, legal um, uh, gender transition uh, you know, which is why I had to go the route of um, getting my passport updated with a letter and everything. I mean, at that point, it had been so long since I'd had a valid passport. It was, like, basically just, like, getting, you know, filing for a new one. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah. Um, that is, that is stuff that happens. And I've got my coffee right here. And I am going to have my coffee. So, right, um, so yeah, take, oh, right, sunscreen came up because my, uh, my lawyer, she is quite African-American and quite lesbian, and she, uh, so yeah, she, uh, she got a sunburn, she got a sunburn, and she is, she is a bit dark, so yes, like, even if you have dark skin, like, yeah, that's, like, great for, um, oh, my mom. You know, you're going to age a lot better, but you can still get sunburn. You can still get sunburn. You can, uh, you know, the sun can still darken you just a little bit. You know, granted, not, like, too especially much. And your sunburn will not be as noticeable as it is on um, pale people. But wear your sunscreen, no matter your color. Just do it. It's, it's maybe two minutes out of your day before you leave the house, right? And so, yeah, wear your sunscreen. Um, otherwise, take care of yourselves. Uh, as always, um, if you have more dollars than cents, as I said, like, five minutes ago, PayPal tip jar and Patreon links are in the description box below. Uh, bell notification and... So, please don't. Oh, my gosh. I had to put this book on top of a big pile of yarns and everything, and now it all just came sliding down because he stepped on it in just the right way. As always, take care of yourselves, including wearing your sunscreen. PayPal and Patreon are in the description box below if you have more dollars and cents. And um, it, thumb, note, thumb icons if you to denote your pleasure or lack thereof with all of my nonsense. And if you wish to see more of my nonsense and you haven't already, please hit subscribe and um, bell notifications if you want your phone to scream at you every time I upload some nonsense. Other than that, bats and kisses, and I love you all, and goodbye!